So my name is Kenit Oham Wongsupasawat, and I'm currently a PhD student at University of Washington at the Interactive Data Lab. And today I'm going to talk on my research work on augmenting visualization tools with automated design and recommendation. So let me begin by introducing a, a bit about our lab and what we do. And basically, our lab's mission is to enhance people's ability to understand and communicate data through the design of interactive systems for data visualization and analysis. Perhaps our lab is most well known for a series of visualization tools that are widely used. For example, D3 was started as a research project at our lab by Mike Wastock, who is now an alumni of the lab. And recently, we have developed Vega, which is a declarative JSON format for interactive visualization. And these two are very successful for supporting custom interactive graphics, both for web application and for journalism, like you have seen in media like New York Times. These two are very powerful, but one of the challenge for using these two is that the two are quite low level. So users have to have a lot of technical expertise and write quite complex code to create a single visualization. For data analysis, analysts may want to quickly create visualization to explore different aspects of that data. Using tools like D3 or Vega might be inconvenient for exploring data. So based on this motivation, my research explores how can we provide automation to help people create visualization more effectively with less efforts. So in my PhD work, uh, my unifying theme is to design visualization tools that are augmented with automated design recommendation. And this includes tools for general data analysis and exploration, which could be the focus of this talk. But I have also designed tools that ship with TensorFlow to visualize data flow graph of deep learning models when I, mean, I was at Google. So for this talk, let's focus on the tools for data exploration and analysis. So I'll first show how we design languages for describing chart for both like manually chart creation, a manual chart creation, and for chart recommendation. And the second part of the talk, I will show how we use this language to build a recommendation power interfaces for data exploration. The language is actually called Vega Lite, and it's like a light version of Vega. So we build it on top of Vega and, and D3. And this is work that in law of many contributors, including Dominic, Arwin, Jeff, and many on contributors. Let's go back a little bit and think about like popular visualization tools. And to support a broad range of graphics, many popular visualization tools adopt the idea from the grammar of graphics by Lee Wilkinson. And the idea is that a grammar of graphics can provide primitive building blocks for composing a broad range of visualizations, just like English grammar informs us how to compose words into sentences. Based on this idea, tools like D3 and Vega offer fine grain control for composing custom interactive graphics. But as I mentioned earlier, they require a lot of technical expertise. Like basically you have to be JavaScript ninja to, to use D3 and require verbal education. Like creating a bar chart may require a hundred lines of code. So building on top of these two, we decide the Vega like grammar for representing chart in our recommender system and for support rapid creation of interactive charts. To support this goal, Wayalai offers chart building blocks in a concise language. And to achieve constriction, we provide sense, we automatically generate sensible default for low level details, but then allow users to customize their plots by overriding this default. So Wayalai is providing a universal JSON format that you can describe visualization and then provide a JavaScript library that you can convert JSON specification into a visualization. And by using web-based application, web platform, this allows us to develop new system and also support usage across multiple environments. And also, if you think about other grammar, you might know about ggplot. What's different about Vegalite is that we also introduce building blocks for composing multi-view and interactive charts. So let's see some examples and see how Vegalite provides building blocks to create a chart. And here I'm going to use a histogram as an example. So if you think about histogram, a histogram is essentially bar marks with X position encoding a binet field. And the Y position then encode count of values within each bin. Wigalite basically provides a JSON syntax to define this structure. First, you can describe the data, in this case, from a URL. Then you can set the graphical mark type to a bar. You can then define encoding or mapping between data fields and visual properties like X and Y. Here, temperature is mapped to X. And you can also define transformation like binning within the encoding. And finally, map aggregate account to Y axis. Now we get a representation that leaves you underlying structure of a histogram. And note that this equation is 
way shorter than what you would do in D3. And that's partly because under the hood, we can like automatically generate sensible defaults for low level details like scale and axis for the X and Y encodings. With these grammar based building blocks, we can also add more encodings to the chart. For example, if we encode data type with color, then we get a stack histogram. Under the hood, uh, we can like automatically use a categorical color palette to encode data type instead of using a color ramp which is better for quantitative field. But if users want to customize this plot, for example, customizing color and make sunny yellow, for example, they can all write default scale properties, like in this example. So using this kind of syntax, we can create and also recommend a variety of charts. And in the latest version of Vega Lite, we also extend Vega Lite with an algebra for composing multiple graphics using operator like repeat to create a scatter plot matrix or using concatenation or layering or fastening to create small multiples. And we also present building blocks to simplify interactions on these composed views. And within Vega Lite, all of these building blocks are available in a single unified language. For today, since we have quite limited time, I wouldn't cover details about the syntax for view composition and interactions. But if you want to learn more, uh, feel free to look at our public talk at OpenRiffConf or look at our website or research paper. So let's talk a bit more about how people are using Vegalite. So as you see from the example, you can write Vegalite code to quickly create charts. And to aid our users, we also provide an online editor that helps validate and auto-complete the syntax so you don't have to remember everything. You can also use Vegalite in a platform like Observable, which is an online uh, interactive JavaScript notebook environment that my boss and team uh, recently created. Like here is it's a, a tutorial on, on the platform, how you can use Vegalite. We have also seen people use Vegalite in publications. For example, a recent book by Daniel Fisher and Mirai Meyer, Making Data Visual, comes with an online gallery of Vegalite examples. And leading academic journal like Nature also mentioned that tools like Vegalite make scientific data more accessible and reproducible. With the JSON syntax, Vegalite can also serve as a visualization file format. We are very excited that Jupyter Lab, which is the next version of Jupyter Data Science Notebook, already ships with native support for Vegalite. And although our main library is in JavaScript, our collaborators have developed native APIs to wrap Vegalite in other languages. For example, Altair is a popular wrapper for Vegalite in Python. And the feedback from the Altair community is very encouraging. Our reviews by Dan Saber state that it's this type of one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one mapping between thinking code and visualization that's my favorite thing about Altair. And of course, the underlying Vegalite language. So, so far, I'm only showing how you can use Vegalite uh, to create visualization by writing code directly, but we can also develop user interfaces. Like here, we develop a research prototype called Polestar and model it after Tableau, where you can drag and drop variables from the list of fields on the left to encoding shelf to create visualization. So this is basically like a lightweight web-based version of, of Tableau, right? So with this uh, different usage, we are like, uh, used in uh, many leading tech companies and for the past month alone, we are, like download over 130K times on NPM and still growing. And we also received over a thousand stars on GitHub. And in fact, the funny thing is the Altair wrapper in Python even received more stars than us. And that's partly because Python data science community is, is larger. Here you can see that Vegalite itself can be very powerful and useful for many usage scenario. But let's see how we can build novel interfaces that accelerate data exploration with chart recommendation. So let's think a bit more about data exploration or formerly known as like exploratory data analysis. So if you receive a new data set that you haven't seen before, in an ideal exploration, good analysts should perform two high-level tasks. First, they should begin their analysis with a broad exploration to familiarize themselves with different variables in the data set. After getting a broad overview, they may focus on answering specific questions. For example, they might examine if a pair of fields correlated. Investigating these questions may spark exploration of other potentially relevant fields and interleading again to more focused analysis. This is an ideal scenario, but if you think about current tools like even Vegalite or ggplot or Tableau. It's very powerful. You can do a lot of question answering because you can create a variety of charts. But for the open-ended exploration, creating charts one by one can be tedious. And for analysts without discipline or time, they may all look important data quality issues like some error in the data, or they may prematurely fixate on specific questions. And that's 
where the two core versions that we build comes into play and try to tackle this problem. And we have developed num like multiple prototypes and the for the latest version called version two, we basically try to bring chart specification and recommendation in a single tool in order to facilitate both open exploration and question answering. And we provide multiple interaction methods with varying degree of automation in this tool. So we build version two uh, on top of Polestar that I briefly shown earlier. So user can create arbitrary views using drag and drop interface. But then we add two new partial specification interfaces. So based on the view that or chart the user created, we then recommend related views similar to imagine like Amazon, you see related items that you might want to shop. Here we show related views to suggest alternative way to summarize or encode the data or potentially relevant data fields. And another partial scheduling interface is Wildcard, which is a way that user can create a gallery of multiple charts in parallel. So this is a way to give user control over the automation that we give them to. We have three things, right? So let's see how this interaction works in a, in a demo. And I'm gonna use Voyager 2 to explore a data set about cars. So over the loading the data set, Voyager lists all variables or fields on the left. And the middle pane show encoding shelf that user can drop field to simplify visual encoding. So this is kind of similar to Tableau, if you have used it before. The main view on the right show the specified view on the top. As user haven't specified any visual encoding, when you just load the data, this view is initially empty. Below the specified view is the related view section. Version 2 initially show universe summaries or like basically histograms of all variables to help analysts begin by examining all fields without the need to create any views manually. Looking at the top left part, here we can see that most cars have an even number of cylinders. Uh, or if you look at the line chart of this car are quite old from the 70s to 80s. So actually older than me and probably a lot of people in this room. So after, if you're an analyst, after you explore each field in the data set, the analyst may want to explore bivariate relationships between different pair of fields. Of course, the analyst can manually drag and drop different pair of fields to the encoding shelf. However, the ability of doing this can be tedious and require the analyst to have discipline to examine all interesting pair of fields. Instead, Voyager to provide wildcards to create multiple charts in parallel. Below the list of fields on the left are the wildcard fields, which can be used to encode multiple data fields. To let the system pick appropriate encoding mappings, user can drop any data fields or wildcard field onto the wildcard shelf. For example, dropping two quantitative field wildcards to the wildcard shelf will produce a gallery of scatter plots between all pairs of quantitative fields. With this gallery, user can easily explore relationships between all pairs of quantitative fields. For example, we can see that horsepower and miles per gallon appear to have a quadratic relationship. Basically, cars with higher horsepower tend to have lower miles per gallon. And we can interact with the plot to see our liar or try to take note to record our insight. More importantly, we can drive further recommendation based on this view and use the focus button to promote this view to be the main view. Clicking the button will update both the encoding shelf and the specified view on the top. Based on this specified view, Voyager to recommend different kinds of related views. The related summary section suggests alternative way to summarize the data. For example, from the scatter plot of horsepower and miles per gallon above, here we see a 2D histogram of the same two fields. Scrolling down more, we can see the field suggestion section, which add one additional field to the surface five view to promote discovery of relationships that we might otherwise overlook. So from this quick demo, we can see how user can use and transition between different interaction methods to perform data exploration. We also run user study on it, but I'm not going to go into detail, but basically we try to compare Voyager 2, which is the tool that brings chart scheduling and recommendation with Polestar, which is purely manual scheduling and found that user prefer Voyager 2 for open-ended exploration, but then for question answering, Voyager 2 do as well as Polestar can do. Another interesting bit is that despite having more features than Polestar, many subjects in the user study express that Voyager 2 is easier to use. One said that, I like that Voyager 2 show me what field to include to make a specific graph. With Polestar, I had to do a lot of trial and error and couldn't express what I wanted to see. To summarize in this talk, I've shown you where language is a language that you can describe visualization and show how can we view graphical interface for data exploration that are powered by chart recommendation. Before we end, I want to mention that Voyager is just one application that you can build on top of Vegalite. In fact, Vegalite has served as a foundation for many application research projects. Like earlier, we mentioned that we have 
Vega is being used in data science via Jupyter Lab and a wrapper like Altair and many other wrapper in other languages. And in an ongoing work, we are also collaborating with the Jupyter team to integrate Voyager 2 as an extension for Jupyter Lab so people can readily use Voyager 2 in their data science workflow. And besides industry application, each of these two has also enabled new research projects. For example, we have built a model for automated reasoning about visualization similarity and sequencing of a Vega light. Our colleagues at Georgia Tech and Stanford are working on different natural language interfaces for data visualization and analysis based on Vega light. So who knows, maybe someone in this room may build other applications for Vega light in the future. So I'm excited to see what people are going to use this tool to build new different things. So lastly, I would like to thank my contributors uh, to Vega light, Altair, and Voyager. And here are top contributors, including a number of students at UW, our research collaborator at Tableau, and our colleagues in the open source community. And with that, I'm gonna end the talk. Thank you.